Families ask a lot of their vehicles, but few kinds of car can answer more of those questions than a properly large MPV. This much improved, more efficient and better connected third generation Sharan model is Volkswagen's idea of what a car-like people carrier of this sort should be, with a variety of seating options and punchy yet economical engines. Sliding side doors enhance access, plus all the seats offer plenty of space and magically disappear when you don't need them. There are more affordable options in this class, but few better ones. Back in the early 90s, there was nothing compact about people carriers. They were properly big, with proper boxy space for seven adults. Now, if for you that's still what an MPV should be, then here's a contender that you're going to need to consider. The much improved Mark III model version of Volkswagen's Sharan. We've had two decades and three generations of this multi-purpose vehicle and over 800,000 Sharans have been sold since the model's original launch back in 1995. So hundreds of thousands of young people now starting work or entering university grew up with one of these. If not the first design code developed with Ford, then certainly the Mark II model launched in 2000, which sold until this third generation version was introduced in 2010. Now, by this time, Ford had got its own way in the segment, but Volkswagen continues to share the design of this car with its partner brand Seat, whose Alhambra remains the most direct alternative for potential Sharan buyers. There aren't many other options for those in search of a similarly capable car of this kind, although it is easy to get confused into thinking that there are. In talking of alternatives to this Volkswagen, a lot of the magazines and the websites and so-called motoring experts will refer to seven-seater people carriers like Citroen's Grand C4 Picasso, uh, Vauxhall's Zafira Tourer and BMW's 2 Series Grand Tourer. Ignore them. These contenders, and others like them, are merely stretched versions of compact MPV models with third row seats really only intended for kids. In contrast, this Sharan is a proper large segment people carrier, which means that it's not based on the small underpinnings of something like a Focus or an Astra. So it'll have no trouble in taking seven fully sized adults as far as they need to go. If you want another people carrier that can do this and would like something properly designed as a car rather than directly derived from a van, then apart from that Seat Alhambra model I just mentioned, the only other alternative to this vehicle is Ford's Galaxy. Ah, uh, yes, the Galaxy. Once a relative, now this car's fiercest rival. Now, Ford launched a new fourth generation version of it in 2015 and though Volkswagen couldn't respond with a completely redesigned version of this Sharan, they did meet the Blue Oval brand's challenge by thoroughly revising this third generation model in the summer of 2015 and creating the car that we're going to lack at here with its more frugal engines, extra connectivity and stronger safety provision. It slots into the Wolfsburg maker's vast MPV range, just above the more compact Caddy Life, Golf SV and Touran models, and just below the huge transporter van-based transporter shuttle and Caravelle people carriers. But will these midlife changes be enough to keep this Sharan current for buyers prioritising space with sensibility in this segment? And is this really the kind of MPV you actually need? Time to find out. Development of this third generation Sharan occupied Volkswagen's finest brains for nearly 15 years and presumably much of that time was spent figuring out how it could be bigger yet lighter than before. In the event, uh, to launch this larger Mark III model managed that trick and its 30 kilogram weight saving over its predecessor is one of the reasons why it's a more agile thing to drive. These things are relative, of course. Anyone who tells you that a large segment MPV is rewarding at the wheel is either lying or being paid by the manufacturer concerned. This one, though, is probably as nimble as it needs to be for its practical role in life. Yes, we would like a little more feedback from the steering, but at least the car doesn't roll and wallow through the bends to the extent that a large van-based MPV would do. Volkswagen's own Caravelle, for example. 
Further improvements to the Charan's demeanor won't be possible until this model line gets a more sophisticated set of underpinnings, and that hasn't happened here. So unlike the Mark's more recent designs, uh, the smaller Turan MPV, for example, this car still doesn't use the German Group's stiffer, more sophisticated MQB chassis platform. This is also the reason why Charan buyers can't specify the driver profile selection system that all the Wolfsburg brand's cheaper mid-size models use. One of those that can alter throttle response, uh, steering feel and gear shift timings at the press of a button. Do typical Charan buyers actually need that though? Well, we doubt it. The few that do can tick the box for the optional DCC dynamic chassis control system that we're trying here. One of those setups that individually adjust the dampers at each wheel to give better body control, improve ride comfort, or try and achieve a workable combination between the two should the driver override the normal setting and select either sport or comfort modes. Now, in our experience, normal seems to be the best compromise between the two, which to some extent rather defeats the point of specifying DCC in the first place. I think if it was me, I'd rather spend the extra money on the improved version of Volkswagen's Park Assist system. This can guide you into not only parallel parking spaces, but also those at right angles for the direction of traffic. Under the bonnet, the engine range is broadly as it was before, uh, though the units on offer are all now more efficient and Euro 6 compatible, while the TDI diesels boast slightly more power. Things kick off with a 1.4-litre TSI petrol variant, which uses both turbocharging and supercharging to generate 150 PS. That's enough to make this base derivative actually quite an eager thing on the road and drag 1.75 tonnes along at quite a lick, although frequent use of the smooth six-speed manual gearbox is required to maintain rapid progress. 62 miles an hour from rest occupies 9.9 .9 seconds en route to 124 miles an hour. Most Chiran buyers, though, are going to want one of the two-litre TDI diesels. Now, unless sticker price and insurance groupings are everything, we can't see much point in opting for the entry-level 115 PS variant, as it's no cheaper to run than the 150 PS model that we're trying here, despite being significantly slower and offering less torque. In a 2-litre TDI 115 PS Charan, 62 miles an hour is 12.6 uh, seconds away, en route to 114 miles an hour, and you get 280 newton metres of torque. In this 150 PS model, the figures are 10.3 seconds, 124 miles an hour, and 340 newton meters of torque, and that's a difference you'll certainly feel on the road. And when towing, which is why the brake towing weight rises from 2,000 to 2,200 kilograms with this pokier version. Another Charan variant we can't quite see the point of is the top 2-litre TDI 184 PS version. Yes, it goes a little faster, 62 miles an hour in 8.9 seconds, en route to 136 miles an hour, but is that really relevant in a car like this? We'd stick with the 150 PS variant being tested here and spend any extra in our budget on the smooth 6-speed DSG automatic gearbox that's been fitted to this test car, a transmission that's also optional on most of the other models in the range. This third generation Turan remains a quietly confident piece of design, very obviously car-like in comparison to big van-based models, and still to most eyes, smarter than a rival Ford Galaxy. So much so, in fact, that Volkswagen has resisted the temptation to meddle too much with the looks of this revised model. Refreshingly, perhaps, uh, change for change's sake never figures too high on the Wolfsburg brand's agenda. Which is why there are virtually no changes at all here at the front end, where styling borrowed from Volkswagen's compact Golf and Polo models continues to help create the illusion that this car is smaller than it actually is. Uh, these headlamps may now be ordered with piercing Xenon technology that can use a dynamic light assist system that constantly tailors the lamp beam to avoid dazzling other road users. At the back, there's been a more significant change with the adoption of these smarter LED light clusters with their more distinctive nighttime signature. These flank the usual centrally positioned Volkswagen badge and sit above the number plate frame's downward facing trapezoidal shape that adds to the feeling of width. Further down, the reflectors are positioned low and wide, and rounding off this rear section is a subtle roof spoiler. 
in profile, smarter wheels and this lower character line help the car avoid a van-like feel despite its prodigious size. Now, if your familiarity with Charan motoring dates back to the pre-2010 second generation model, then the key changes that you're going to notice here are, first of all, the extra size. A 220 millimeter increase in length has made this Mark III model very nearly five meters long. And the addition of something that older Charans never had, sliding side doors. Now, these have two advantages. First, and most obviously, your kids won't re-sculpture the bodywork of adjacent cars as they throw themselves out into the supermarket car park. And second is that in this form, as here, they can be optionally electrically activated. Move inside and here in the second row, you get three individual seats with Isofix attachments that can be separately reclined by up to 20 degrees and slid back and forth by up to 160 millimetres as required. Optional fully integrated child seats can be built into these chairs and provided you avoid entry level trim, you get folding seat back tables and seat back storage pockets. You can also add in this waste bin if you want to. Plus, all models offer second row occupants a 12-volt socket and these neat dual fold-out cup holders. And these useful underfloor storage compartments into which you'll put stuff and then almost certainly forget where you stored it. So time to take a look at the third row, which is where my kids always want to sit. Access to which is made easier by the easy entry function through which the outer seats in the second row tilt and slide forward in a single motion. Now once in these rearmost chairs, kids will be delighted to find that they sit a little higher than those ahead, while their parents will discover that this is one of those unusual things, a seven-seater that seven fully-sized adults can actually fit into. Seats like these in compact MPVs and most 4x4s are usually for kids only or very uncomplaining and agile adults unfamiliar with the offerings of Colonel Sanders. Earlier Mark I and Mark II model Charans weren't much better either, but thanks to this 75mm of extra wheelbase, this one's been able to make a real step forward and the cabin's huge glass area removes the feeling of claustrophobia that you'd normally expect to find. One potential annoyance for family users is that back here you don't get the Isofix child seat fastening points that you would find in the third row of Volkswagen's smaller Turan MPV. On the plus side though, occupants here have their own air vents and these two useful lidded boxes, the left hand one incorporating two small cup holders and an oddments tray. Let's go up front, where the dashboard is almost exactly as it was on the original version of this third generation model. This decorative mid-height trim strip dividing the fascia neatly into upper and lower zones. As usual with Volkswagen models, the layout is clear, concise, logical. Avoid entry-level trim and you get these supportive comfort seats with lumbar adjustment and this leather-trimmed three-spoke multifunction steering wheel. Through it you view the usual clear pair of uh, Volkswagen dials separated by a neat multifunction TFT display that uses the same carousel style graphic system as you'll find on the central dash screen. Ah uh, yes, the centre dash screen. This 6.5 inch display comes either in standard composition media form where it marshals the usual DAB radio, Bluetooth phone and informational functions or in this Discover Navigation Guides where you not only get a 3D sat-nav system but also Volkswagen's very helpful Carnet Guide and Inform setup that gives you in-car online access to a whole range of useful journeying information. Everything from traffic news, uh, weather and news feeds to information on fuel and parking prices at your place of destination. With this Discover package, you can get what Volkswagen calls a car stick, a device you simply stick into the USB socket to create in your Charan an in-car Wi-Fi hotspot. And once you have that, you can then link into their clever Volkswagen Media Control app that allows passengers with a tablet to use that in-car Wi-Fi to access media features from anywhere in the vehicle. So your kids in the third row could program the sat-nav or change the radio station for example, but then maybe that's not such a good idea after all. 
Whatever type of infotainment package you opt for, you can make it a fair bit cleverer at minimal extra cost by adding in Volkswagen's optional CarNet App Connect system. Now, via this, you can integrate with the latest Apple CarPlay, Android Auto and Mirrorlink systems that will enable you to duplicate the functionality of your smartphone handset onto the infotainment screen and access selected apps. Now, one of these is the brilliant Carnet Cam Connect app that, as a parent, quite literally gives you eyes in the back of your head. Now, if you have one of those uh, natty GoPro cameras, then using the App Connect package, you simply download a free app from the Volkswagen website and connect in the camera. Using Mirrorlink, it'll cleverly transmit images from the back of the vehicle onto the central dash infotainment touchscreen for you to view as you drive. As for interior practicality, well, yes, that has been well thought through with a plethora of storage compartments. There are up to 33 of these, apparently, with this tally also including more cup holders than you'd find in the Real Madrid trophy room. Two of these are here behind the gear stick, while in front of it is a cubby that will probably end up being used for phones when they're not being charged via either the USB or 12-volt sockets in this uh, rather small storage box between the seats. Other stowage areas include a shallow lidded uh, face top compartment, deep door bins with bottle holders and uh, again rather small cooled glove box. Avoid entry level trim and you also get these useful under seat drawers too. And if you resist the temptation to specify the huge glass panoramic roof then you get these useful roof mounted boxes, a smaller one in front and a larger one behind. Finally, let's check out this Charan from a luggage capacity point of view. Now, there's the option of an electric tailgate if you find this hatch too heavy to lift, uh, but it opens to reveal a cabin in which every inch of space has been maximised. Now, with all seven seats in place like this, there's a reasonable 300 litres of cargo capacity on offer. And that's the same as you get in a Ford Galaxy, but far more than you get in a C-Max or Scenic-style seven-seat MPV with all the chairs in place. It's more than twice what you get in a similarly configured version of the next people carrier down in Volkswagen's MPV range, the Turan. Now, we would point out, though, that a chunk of this space is freed up by Volkswagen's decision not to offer buyers a proper temporary spare wheel, just one of those fiddly tyre sealant kits. You can certainly make the most of the room on offer. This car has the optional cargo management system, this useful hanging net, and you could also add a floor-to-ceiling partitioning net too if, say, you wanted to keep pets in place. All Charans get this surprisingly spacious uh, lidded compartment in the left-hand cargo bay wall. And on the right, there's a 12-volt socket, a bag hook, and the button for this optional swivelling tow bar that glides neatly out when you need it. Most of the time, of course, you're not going to need these two extra chairs. So it's time to try the neat uh, easy fold fold flat seating system that was such a big step forward when this Mark III Charan was originally launched. It's easy to forget now that earlier versions of this model had seats you had to lug in and out of the car if you wanted to maximise all of the luggage space. Here, the seats much more conveniently fold into the floor, freeing up. 743 litres or 917 litres if you load up to the window line. Need more room? Well, if the item in question is merely long and thin, like a set of skis, it may suffice merely to flatten the middle second row backrest. If, though, you really need to supersize your space, then folding all three rear chairs creates a completely flat cargo area that's 2,297 litres in size. And this space can be even further extended with this uh, fold-flat front passenger seat. It's standard, provided you avoid entry-level trim. This will allow your MPB to swallow really long items, like a kayak, for example. Before we get into this, our advice to families considering a seven-seater MPV would be to make sure that you're considering like with like. There are, after all, many compact people carriers that claim to be seven-seaters, when all they really offer is a couple of extra eunuch seats that fold out from the boot. The whole idea of paying the extra money for a large MPV like this one is that it can properly carry seven adults anywhere. 
which partly explains the £27,000 to £37,000 pricing bracket in which this Charan sits. Indeed, the mid-range 2-litre TDI 150 diesel variants that many buyers will want tend to be costed around the £30,000 mark, once you've allowed for a few well-chosen extras. At the bottom of the range, Volkswagen offer a 1.4-litre TSI 150 PS petrol engine that relatively few potential buyers require. From here, in base S specification, there's a premium of either around £800 or around £1,600 for diesel motoring. The lower figure will get you the most affordable 115 PS 2-litre TDI engine. The higher figure will get you this unit in the more popular 150 PS form that we're trying here. Avoid entry-level trim and your dealer will also offer you the option of finding a further premium of just under £1,600 to get this power plant in an even pokier 184 PS, guys. Although, by that time, you'll be looking at an asking price of over £32,000. That could comfortably buy you the brand's much larger transporter shuttle model, if you don't mind settling for something more basic and van-like. Potential Sharan buyers probably would mind those kinds of commercial origins, though, uh, which is why there tends to be very little buyer overlap between this car and Volkswagen's transporter van-based shuttle and caravel models. Another reason for that lies with the fact that the plusher caravel costs from around £37,000. It's also pretty unlikely that too many potential Sharan buyers will be looking at uh, Volkswagen's smaller Golf-based Turan. Now, that car won't save you very much over this one, between £1,500 to £3,000, depending on the variant you're looking at. And it offers a lot less luggage space, in addition to much reduced room for third-row seating. On to the value proposition this Sharan offers in comparison to other brands. Now, as I suggested at the beginning, we're not going to waste too much time here comparing this car to compact segment MPVs. Uh, Citroën's Grand C4 Picasso, Vauxhall's Zafira Tourer, BMW's 2 Series Grand Tourer and models like them with child-orientated fold-out boot seats. With diesel engines, such vehicles tend to be priced in the £20,000-£25,000 bracket, but if you were shopping for one and browsing in the Volkswagen showroom, you'd be looking at a Turan. So, something larger, it has to be. A uh, Ford S-Max, perhaps? Well, possibly. Although, uh, that's a model still a little restricted in terms of overall size, and in any case, it wouldn't save you very much over this Volkswagen. Ultimately then, when it boils down to it, we think there are really only two direct alternatives to Sharan ownership. If you need a people carrier that can regularly seat seven adults and which has been properly designed to look and handle like a car rather than being something directly derived from a van. First up, it's Ford's fourth generation Galaxy model, a contender very closely matched to this one in terms of size and price. The Sharan's classier looks and stronger residual values might be enough to keep it ahead in that direct comparison. And Volkswagen also relies on strong residuals to protect this car when potential buyers find themselves tempted by its other most direct rival, say it's Alhambra. That Spanish-branded MPV is virtually identical to this one under the skin and will save you around £1,700 in model-for-model -model comparisons. The Sharan, though, does have a very strong appeal. And if, having considered all the other options, you conclude that it is what you and your family really need, well, then you're going to need to know just how generous the Wolfsburg brand has been when it comes to standard specification. Well, let's see. Even entry-level S-Trim gets you the composition media system with its 6.5-inch touchscreen. Uh, and via this, you'll access an 8-speaker DAB stereo system with Bluetooth phone connectivity, an SD card reader, and a USB connection. Uh, you get an old-fashioned CD player, too, which isn't always included as standard on cars these days. Volkswagen also throws in three-zone electronic air conditioning with automatic air recirculation, rain-sensing wipers and an auto-dimming rear-view mirror. We would have liked to see a spare wheel of some kind too, but unfortunately, as is depressingly common these days, you're stuck as standard with one of those fiddly tyre repair kits. Otherwise, included equipment really just covers the basics that you expect for this kind of money. Things like driver's seat height adjustment, all-round electric windows and mirrors, a cooled glove box, an alarm and a multifunction trip computer. 
Most buyers, though, will want to find the relatively affordable extra premium to upgrade themselves to the mid-range SE trim level that we're trying in this instance. We would suggest you do, because otherwise you'll have to forego a lot of the practical features that really make this Charan what it is. Things like chrome-plated roof rails, a fold-flat front passenger seat, fold-out tables for second row occupants, and a lot of the interior storage areas that you'll need. Things like under front seat drawers, seat back pockets, and extra cup holders. The SE model uh, looks smarter too, courtesy of 16-inch alloy wheels, uh, chromed exterior trim, and rear tinted glass. And it'll feel much nicer inside too, thanks to a leather-covered multifunction steering wheel, decorative dashboard trim inserts, and extra supportive comfort front seats. Plus, there's front and rear parking sensors, cruise control, and a useful MDI multi-device interface that, via a USB connection, allows you to connect in compatible products to the composition infotainment system. At this level in the range, buyers also have the extra cost option of making the infotainment package far more intuitive with Volkswagen's Discover Navigation System and the brand's clever Carnet Guide and Inform setup that gives you in-car access to a whole range of useful journeying information. Everything from traffic news, weather and news feeds to information on fuel and parking prices in your place of destination. There's the option of voice control and the whole setup can be linked to a clever media control app that allows passengers with a tablet to use in-car Wi-Fi to access media features from anywhere in the car. So someone in the third row could program the sat-nav or change the stereo volume, for example. Uh, as you'd expect, the whole Discover Navigation and Carnet Guide and Inform package comes as standard on a flagship SEL variant that also includes larger 17-inch wheels, uh, front fog lamps, a panoramic glass roof, and a classier interior with footwell lighting, front heated sports seats, Alcantara and leather upholstery trim, and heated windscreen washer jets. On to options, and a key one is Volkswagen's clever Carnet App Connect package. It allows owners of Apple and Android smartphone handsets to use the Apple CarPlay, Android Auto and MirrorLink systems that mean you can duplicate the functionality of your phone onto the dashboard infotainment display and access selected apps in car. Once you have App Connect, you'll also get access to what could be our favourite feature on this Charan, the Carnet Cam Connect app that is apparent quite literally gives you eyes in the back of your head. Now, if you've got one of those natty GoPro cameras, then using the App Connect package, you simply download a free app from the Volkswagen website and connect in the camera. Using MirrorLink, it will cleverly transmit images from the back of the vehicle onto the central dash infotainment touchscreen for you to view as you drive. So you can keep an eye on squabbling kids in the back. Brilliant. Of course, there's more chance of your offspring behaving on longer journeys if they're distracted. Now you can talk to your dealer about an iPad holder that attaches behind the front seat headrests. Clip in your tablet to it and your kids will be able to watch films while you're on the move. Other extra cost niceties include power folding mirrors, keyless entry, full Vienna leather trim and a winter pack that gives you heat for the front seats and for the windscreen washer jets to make those icy mornings a little more bearable. Aesthetic touches include a range of alloy wheels with rims 16, 17 or 18 inches in size. Plus, as usual, there's the option of various metallic or pearl effect paint colours. And beyond that, well, you can specify separate climate controls for rear seat passengers and a classier colour display for the multifunction screen in the instrument binnacle. The eight-speaker, 300-watt Dynaudio Excite sound pack would be nice to have, as would the park assist feature that can automatically steer you into the tightest spaces and would certainly be useful, uh, perhaps in concert with the optional rear-view camera. As for practicalities, well, we want to look at the optional power closing systems for the side doors and the tailgate. Uh, for the boot, we'd like this car's cargo management system that gives you a useful hanging net in the boot area. There's also a floor-to-roof lining net partition that you can add, probably ideal for those with dogs. Um, there are optional carpet mats that you'll probably need for messy kids who might also benefit from the extra-cost integrated child seats, along perhaps with roller blinds for the rear side windows. And, of course, there's the option of a tow bar. This one is an electrically-releasing swivelling item. 
Plus, you can talk to your dealer about the usual roof racks, roof boxes and cycle carriers. And there are useful optional interior fitments like waste bins, clothes hangers and even a cool and thermos box. Well, as an MPV buyer, you can't be too practical, can you? As for driving stuff, well, mainstream versions of this Charan don't get the XDS electronic differential lock system that helps you get traction down through the bends, which is a little disappointing given that the brand's smaller, cheaper Turan model has it. Still, you can specify XDS as an affordable option, and it probably is a worthwhile box to tick. More enthusiastic Charan drivers will want to look at the DCC dynamic chassis control setup that allows you to set the ride up to suit the road you're on. It's a better alternative than the firmer sport suspension option. On to safety. All Charans get nine airbags, twin front side and curtain airbags, plus a driver's knee bag and twin second row side bags. Impressive. Uh, strange then that Volkswagen doesn't complete the job by fitting Isofix child seat fastenings in the third row, where many small children will often sit. You only get these attachments in the second row. The electronic stuff is well covered though. Across the range, the Volkswagen brand has installed a clever automatic post-collision braking system that automatically brakes the car down to six miles an hour after a collision. So if, uh, say, someone hits you and, understandably, you go to pieces, the car will automatically sort itself out. Avoid entry-level trim and you also get a driver alert system that monitors your driving reactions for drowsiness and prompts you to stop for a restorative coffee if lethargy is detected. Plus, from SD level upwards, there's a front assist system that at speed scans the road ahead as you drive for potential accident hazards and warns you if one's detected and will automatically brake if necessary. You get that same kind of functionality at urban speeds too, as part of a city emergency braking system included as part of that front assist package. On top of this, there are the usual electronic systems to try and ensure that neither of these features will ever be needed. That means ESC stability control, the usual ABS braking, an ASR traction control system and an EDL electronic differential lock that allows smooth starts on split friction road surfaces, say if one side of the car is on wet leaves for example. The auto hold function on the electronic parking brake stops you from drifting backwards on uphill junctions and there's a tyre pressure loss indicator too. Going further with safety provision in this Volkswagen either requires a really plush trim level or the spending of more cash, but the options available are pretty impressive. Take the ACC Adaptive Cruise Control System that uses radar technology to automatically keep you a safe distance from the vehicle in front. Want even more? Well, there's an optional side scan feature that alerts you if, on the move, you're about to dangerously pull out in front of another vehicle. And as part of that package, you also get a rear traffic alert system that alerts you to oncoming vehicles when you're reversing out of a space. Another option is lane assist, which is there to warn you if you drift out of your lane on the highway. And you could also specify a high beam assist feature that will automatically dip your headlights at night in the face of oncoming traffic. If you've paid extra for xenon headlamps, uh, then there's the option of a more sophisticated dynamic light assist feature that doesn't usually need to dip your lights at night to avoid dazzling other motorists. Instead, the system merely covers part of the headlamps appropriately. So, we've talked about the Charan's practicality, but how will its running costs add up? Well, let's see. This time around, the engine range has been upgraded to Euro 6 status, and all the units are impressively clean and frugal, with running cost improvements across the range of up to 14.3%, all thanks to a series of what Volkswagen calls Blue Motion Technology tweaks. Uh, these include things like brake energy recuperation, low rolling resistance tyres, and a start-stop system that cuts the engine when you don't need it, when you're stuck in traffic or waiting at the lights. Uh, like most modern diesels, the Charan TDI units get a particulate filter and inject a urea-based solution called AdBlue into the exhaust gas stream to help clean up emissions. Uh, this solution is stored in a 16-litre tank on the left-hand side of the luggage compartment and that will need topping up every 6,200 miles as part of regular servicing.
Many owners will want to take up the option of the DSG automatic gearbox that we're trying here. Um, do that in smaller Volkswagen MPVs and you get slightly better running cost returns. However, that's because these more recent models use the Wolfsburg Maker's 7-speed DSG unit. The age of this Charan's basic design means that it must use the older 6-speed DSG box, which on mainstream models slightly deteriorates the fuel and CO2 figures. Still, you would expect that from an auto transmission, and in any case, the penalty isn't very great, um, aided on this revised model by a useful coasting function that at cruising speeds decouples the engine when you lift off the accelerator. On to the figures. The base 150 PS 1.4 litre TSI petrol variant is at least 11.1% more frugal than it was in the pre-facelifted model, managing 43.5 miles per gallon on the combined cycle and 150 grams per kilometre of CO2. Figures that only deteriorate fractionally if you want an automatic. Of course, you can substantially improve that showing by going for the 2 litre TDI diesel engine that we're trying here. It's available in either 115 PS or 150 PS guises, and in each case, the returns are identical. 56.5 miles per gallon on the combined cycle and 130 grams per kilometre of CO2. That is around 9% better than the equivalent version of the pre-facelifted model, which incidentally had 10 PS less power. This 150 PS unit can be ordered with that DSG auto box, in which case you're looking at 54.3 miles per gallon and 136 grams per kilometre. Go for either manual or automatic versions of the top 2 litre TDI 184 PS diesel variant and you're looking at 53.3 miles per gallon and 138 grams per kilometre. And that's at least 8.6% better than before. What else? Uh, well, of course, uh, ultimately with efficiency, a lot depends on the driver, who will benefit from a lot more than just the usual gear shift indicator to help improve frugality. With the optional CarNet App Connect system, there's a chance to add in the Think Blue Trainer feature to the central infotainment screen's car section, a display that gives you three circular dials graphically showing and scoring your recent driving efficiency on a scale of 0 to 100. Plus, there's a fuel consumption overview screen and the option of accessing a series of Think Blue fuel saving tips. Although, to be frank, some of these are rather blindingly obvious. Things like uh, think ahead while driving and drive in the highest possible gear. What else? Um, residual values. Well, these should be stronger than just about anything in the class. Independent experts Quick Car Cost reckon that a 2 litre TDI 115 PS Charan will be worth 35.03% of its original value after three years of use. And that should go some way towards offsetting purchase pricing for this car that's slightly higher than the mainstream opposition. As for servicing, well, there's a fixed price package that covers a car for three years and 30,000 miles. This includes an oil change at 12 months or 10,000 miles, whichever is soonest, an interval service that includes an oil change at 24 months or 20,000 miles, and a full inspection service with oil and brake fluid changes at 36 months or 30,000 miles. In each case, parts and labour will be guaranteed for two years, and you'll be able to transfer the plan to a second owner should you sell your Chiran during the period of cover. On to insurance. With the base 1.4 litre TSI petrol engine, you can get group uh, 19E or 20E, depending on the trim level you choose. With the 2 litre TDI diesel, you can get group uh, 15E for the 115 PS version, and a rating of between 18E and 20E for the 150 PS unit that we're trying here. For the top 2 litre TDI 184 PS engine, the rating is between group 21E and 23E. And warranties. Well, the standard package is three years and 60,000 miles. We can't see why Volkswagen couldn't extend that mileage limit to 100,000 miles, since that's what you get on its mechanically very similar Caddy Life seven-seat model. Doing that, though, wouldn't, of course, give Volkswagen dealers so much of an opportunity to sell extended warranty packages. There's one for four years and 75,000 miles, or if you plan to see a bit more of the world in your Charan, there's a five-year, 90,000-mile package too. Whatever your decision, your car will come with three years of pan-European roadside assistance that has no mileage restriction. The paintwork warranty lasts for three years, and as you'd expect, this MPV is protected by a 12-year anti-corrosion warranty. It creeps up on you, doesn't it? The need for this kind of car, I mean. 
The process that starts with that first wrestling match against an Isofix child seat and ends with mum and dad buried beneath a pile of bicycles, nappy bags, footballs and pushchairs often ultimately leads to a large MPV. There are, it's true, bigger ones than this Sharan, but they relinquish the rewarding driving experience and this car pioneered at its launch all those years ago. And having a family ought to be fun. Not much chance of that if you're confining poor old granny to a third row berth so cramped that she'll need massaging by the time you reach the garden centre. That's why a large class MPV could be a better choice for you than a scenic or C-Max style seven seat alternative. Perhaps not too large though. Going up as far as something huge and van based will leave you having to lug seats in and out every time you want to go to the dump. And that's not much fun either. So a large class car like MPV like this makes sense. But why this one? After all, a rival Ford Galaxy is a newer design and a sale to Alhambra is cheaper, which, before experiencing this model, might be enough to make you wonder whether buying a Chiran still makes as much sense as living with one. Having spent some time with this car, though, we feel inclined to argue a case for it. Thanks to the tenacious way it holds on to its value by class standards, the price issue, well, isn't such an issue if you consider whole life costs rather than the upfront sticker price. And as for the newness of the design, well, these midlife changes have done just enough to keep the total package feeling quite fresh. Ultimately, then, what you're left with, in summary, is a pretty complete proposition. In this Volkswagen, you can breathe climatronically filtered air and watch your children on the dash while you voice control the sat-nav. As they stream music from their phones and tablets through the infotainment setup, you can be checking the weather at your destination and asking for directions to the cheapest places to park and fuel up. This then is the world of the 21st century MPV. And if what you actually need is a large one, then a Charan remains one of the classiest ways to get the job done.